today I am going to show you how to make the two basic things of calculus and I'm going to do it in the most visual way possible. The thing I think describes the derivative and the integral in the most visual way possible. So let's get started. First we got to define our stuff. So if we do this in terms of f of x, we'll start with x squared, but if we do everything in terms of f of x, then we'll be able to change it. And we'll do the same with our bounds. So we're going to go from a equals 0 to b equals 2. So that's what we're going to start with. But where do we want the actual integral? We want the actual, or no, we're going to start with the derivative. So where do we want the actual derivative? We want the derivative, let's say, at a. So... We're going to start with just what we're trying to find. So we have a goal. So f prime of a. So that's the derivative at a. But we want the line. We want the tangent line. That's how we're going to show it. So how do you write the equation of the line? It's just the slope, which is this derivative, times x minus a. And then plus whatever the y value is there, right? That's just point slope form. So f of a. And so right there, that's the tangent line. And so you see we can move it around. Maybe we want to put that point there specifically too, so you can see it. So that would be a comma f of a. So now we have a point. We can actually grab that and move it around now. And we've always got the tangent line. Beautiful. So that's what we're going to end up with. So we actually are going to do something else first. So we want to show that the secant line is turning into the tangent line. So here's what we're going to do. First off, we're going to add another point. We're going to add a point at x equals b. So b comma f of b. So now we can move that around as well. And we're going to write the equation of the line between those two points. So of course that's still going to be using point slope form, but we're not going to be using the derivative as the slope. We're going to be using the slope between those two points. So we'll write that out. That's going to be f of b minus f of a. All of that divided by b minus a. So that's the slope between the two points. And then we just have to make it go through one of the points we can do the x minus a again. It'll go through the b anyway, because that's how this equation works. But make it go through the a. And there we go. So now we got a line between those two points. And really, that's all we want to do. This is the whole point of this is to show that as those two values get closer and closer together, the secant line basically becomes the tangent line. And one thing we do want to do here is... As you see, it already happens when they're right on top of each other. It's just hard to get them right on top of each other. Here, let's do this. Let's set this to 0, and then like this to 2 to start off. So if I drag these points closer together, you see the secant line is eventually going to become the tangent line. But when it's perfectly the tangent line it's going to disappear because b minus a, but b is the same thing as a, so then you're dividing by zero. So that's fine, and that's actually what we want anyway because we don't want the tangent line to always be there. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong point. I don't want the tangent line to always be there. We only want the tangent line to be there when a equals b, and that'll do that with piecewise functions. So now when they're exactly the same oh I hit a wrong button there now when they're exactly the same it'll work yeah I must have hit the bracket sometimes I mess that up a lot but when they're different it'll be the blue line and it'll be the secant line that's great so I would say this is the best way to show what the derivative is because even your basic definition of the derivative it's you have two points and you're dragging them closer together and once they become exactly the same then they're the tangent line but if they're close to exactly the same then they're basically the tangent line 
So that's cool. So the next one that I want to show is the derivative. So let's actually just pull up another Desmos graph. Or not the derivative. That was the derivative. I want to show the integral. So this one's a bit more complicated. Oh, one thing I want we should point out is that this works for any any function because we did it in terms of f of x. So you can set it to like the sine graph and it'll still work. You make them exactly the same. 1.107 and it's purple because it's perfectly the tangent line. Awesome. So we're going to do the same style of thing over here. So we're going to start with f of x and we'll again start with f of x equals x squared and a equals zero and b equals two. And again, we're going to start with what we want. So we're trying to show the integral. So if you do int, that pulls up integral. And of course, we want the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So that's the number that we're looking for. But I'd like to visually show it on the graph. And now this was a lot tougher than I thought it would be actually. So let me walk you through the process of it. So I started with f of x. And so I wanted f of x. So I thought like I wanted f of x is less than y. Okay, and I always get that wrong like the first time. So I want f of x is greater than y. So that then it would be below. And then I was like, well, I only want that from zero or from a to b. So you can do that. That's not bad. You just throw a piecewise function on there. You say you only want it when a is less than x, which is less than b. And then you close the piecewise function. So see, now you can move these around and change how far it goes. But then I was like, in this case, I only want it when y is greater than 0 as well. Because you don't want it to go all the way down, not o, 0. And so like, I was like, this, yeah, this is what I want. But the problem is, it works like this, but if you set, have this be like x cubed, it doesn't do it when it's beneath the y-axis. Of course, because we said only when y is greater than 0. And then the other problem is if we don't put that, it shades underneath there which is not what we want. And so I decided anyway, like I want this to be two different colors, right? That'll make it more sense because when it's above the X axis, it's positive. So I'll make it green and then we can edit this around a little bit and also make it red. So we definitely want this. It's going to happen every time it's below the X axis. So we'll flip this around. We want Y to be less than zero. But we also want to flip the sign because we want to be shading above at this point, right? Because we just want it in between the function and the x-axis if we're talking about the integral. So we want to flip this sign around. So we'll just flip the sign around. There we go. So now this is making it to where it'll shade green when it's above and red when it's below. And just to see how nice that is, let's do sine of x. So there you go. So this is what we want. This is the goal. This is like the perfect answer. So now let's do some Riemann sums to calculate this perfect answer. So how are we going to do that? So remember what Riemann sums are. Riemann sums are rectangles. So let's set this back up to where we have easier stuff. So Riemann sums are rectangles. So we're going to draw the rectangles first. So to draw the rectangles, we're going to have to define some stuff. So let's first say how many rectangles we want. And of course, we want to be able to change that. So let's say n equals 4. We're going to start with 4. And now we want to define some other stuff. So we'll still use a to b. So we need to get the width of our rectangles, right? Because that's just going to be a number. So it's just going to be easier if we define that separately. So we're going to do the distance from A to B. And then, I don't know why Desmos assumes you're going to put an equal sign in a parentheses. They won't let you do that. But so we're going to have B minus A divided by how many rectangles we have. So that'll get us the width of our rectangles. 
and then let's draw the rectangles so to do that we're going to use polygons and i think it's a new feature that desmos allows you to put a variable in a polygon to make multiple polygons or a list in a polygon to make multiple polygons so we're definitely going to take advantage of that today so what are we going to do we're going to do how do we like yeah this is the hard part you got to think about so imagine the most left rectangle which in this case is just going to be zero it is like not going to be visible right but you can still ima like imagine it so you're going to start here we want to start at zero in this case because we're going to start at a and then we want to add on like what number of rectangle we're on right so we actually need a new variable we need uh we could it's just to make it easier this is going to be our list we're going to start at zero so zero widths away from the beginning and we're going to go to n minus one widths away from the beginning so see how that's this is like this is going to represent how many rectangles we have it's the same as what n is in the meantime let's make it to where this can only be an integer because that's all that makes sense so now what we got to continue building our polygons so this is going to be a point so let's define that so we're defining the x value right now so the x value starts at a and then our number of widths based on which rectangle we're on so that's going to be n1 because that's our number of rectangle times the widths so that's the x value and we want to start just down here so you see right now it's not working properly because it's just one point so it's treating that whole thing as the polygon but we add the next point and it'll start working so what's the next point the next point is the same x value right we just want to go up to the corresponding y value so that's going to be f of that x value and so you see now here's our start this is the left side of the rectangle so this is the second rectangle right here remember because we can't actually see the first rectangle but we're going to go up and then the next one is we want to go over here to get the top of the rectangle so that's our next point so what is that well it's the same x value but we add another width right so i'm going to do that and then i'm going to add another w add another width but then it doesn't go up to there right it just stays at the same height so we'll keep it at the same height and you see there we go so now we're going over now we just got to go back down so to go back down we're just going to do that same x value I'll copy it that same x value comma zero and so there's our rectangles that's beautiful now again we had similar issues that i didn't like when it was negative or did we actually no i don't think i had issues i think it worked perfectly when it was negative all i wanted to do was change the coloring to have it similar as the next one but see how it works see how you go up to the graph you go over and you go down you can make there be more rectangles and it gets closer and closer to the original area so what's the last thing we want to do the last thing I wanted to do was make the coloring systems and that was really simple so we're gonna have to make this a piecewise function luckily you can make these piecewise functions so I'm going to do it a little bit differently than in my practice and see how it works. So what do we want? We only want, we want to separate it. So we want it, this to be when the Y value is positive, right? So the best way is just copy one of these Y values. So is we want it to be one thing when it's greater than zero. Why does this not work? Right, that's the thing I have to change that I have to make this another polygon. Both of the branches have to be polygons for whatever reason. So I can do something like that. 
And you see that does that's just like this polygon of zero zero is nothing. Let's just to make sure, let's just do this a plus one. Or let's do it as minus one. So it nothing shows up there. And you see, yeah, there's nothing going on as zero zero. So that's fine. And now I remember the reason that I had to do it two separate lines to set it as two separate colors. So when it's above, we want it to be that same green. And then I'm going to duplicate this and set it to red. And then say that we actually only want that when it's less than zero. And so there is our thing. So if we turn off what is this? Oh, right. That's why it's best to put this in a folder so you can turn it off together. So you make a folder. You can call it integral. Put these in here. So now there's, there's our thing. So you can see it's kind of nice because you can see where it's an overestimate, where it's an underestimate. You can change whatever your bounds are. So you see the rectangles get smaller when these get closer together, or you can just change how many rectangles you have. Yeah. So that was another thing that I found it to be nicer when I turned these lines off. So it, you could just see the shades and it makes it a little weird sometimes, but you can see how close it gets to the actually actual thing. And of course you can change the function, make it ever, whatever you want, whatever you're using. Why didn't that work? Oh, it worked. You just can't see it very well. Yeah, that's awesome.